everyone and welcome to this week's video. These shelves are my art shelves and a viewer, Denise Whitaker, hello Denise, asked in the comments for me to please mention your inspiration artists. Well, I thought it's what's on the shelf. Just with the M's, I've got Matisse, Manet, Monet. <laughs> I have got Marlene Dumas, her portrait work, phenomenal. I saw a fantastic exhibition of hers, tremendous. Barbara Ray, the lovely Barbara Ray, Gauguin, Waterhouse, Peter Doig. Oh, he's a real favourite of mine, Peter Doig. If you don't know Peter Doig, have a look. Uh, Gustav Klimt. Uh, so Klimt and Sh Egon Schiele. I've got uh, Leonardo da Vinci. I have got Modigliani. Modigliani. I've got, uh, this is a nice book, Portraits by John Berger. I don't know if any of you know the John Berger um, 70s recordings. Just seems to talk so much sense to me. I like his I like his thinking. David Hockney. Oh, a, a lovely Emily Ball, phenomenal painter who is not too far from here down towards Brighton, um, living, beautiful, free, expressive, portrait, florals. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely work. Um, Emily Ball, like her enormously. Another, some more Emily Ball. Oh, Velasquez, Picasso, Van Gogh. The book I'm looking for, I can't see, so I've got a feeling it's in the cabin. It's a book on watercolours and it's by an artist. I'm going to have to go and get it. I will drop the name in, it escapes me. I've got Anne Blockley as a, um, because Anne Blockley is another quite well-known watercolourist. I've got a Modigliani out at the moment. This is quite funny. I've had a painting of a pineapple. I started it over a year ago and I've been tweaking and adjusting it over the year. And oh, about three months ago, I started seeing an angel, an angel in the pineapple. And I couldn't, I tried and tried to get something in and I couldn't, I couldn't get it right. And then just recently, it, I just sat looking at it and thought, it needs a Modigliani head. <laughs> I'll grab it. So I've borrowed, I've borrowed, it's my pineapple, but I borrowed a Modigliani. And I absolutely think that's, well, I'm thrilled. Um, I'm really happy with it now. Finally, finally, it's become what I think it always wanted to be. It always wanted to be a figure. It didn't want to be a pineapple. That just makes me smile. I really like that. So thank you to Denise for a nice question. And I didn't, at first, I just thought, oh my God, where do I begin? In pursuit of Shirley Trevina, which you cannot find anywhere, I did, um, come across Joan Erdley. I have had, I have had the most bizarre few days. I will drop in a picture of a painting that just came and has been the biggest trigger for a massive shift on the long canvas. The long canvas is no longer what it was. I took the biggest risk, <laughs> a big leap of faith and I'm so glad I did. I'm so pleased. I've been painting flat out for this exhibition and I've got a nice collection of landscapes. I know it's all come from Cornwall. I love the colour palette. I just went with it. It was a case of just go with the flow and I'll put all the pictures in. I'll take some gallery pictures and show you those. Her work is varied, is landscape, is floral, is domestic. 
still life she's something of everything but she does it with her style it's her twist and I think it was the first time that I kind of really engaged and thought this is something a bit different I've got her amazingly having just talked to you this book is called Taking Risks with Watercolour Shirley Trevina painting without colour if anyone's interested in pursuing watercolours there are step-by-step instructions we've got an interior but she's mixing things up she lets things bleed it's blousy and then she's got a nice straight edge colors are fantastic that is a lovely example her landscapes at the moment that really rings with me going into a bit of landscape so I've cleaned off a nice surface. <laughs> Having told you, I was going to paint on the, the painting that I wasn't going to cut off. <laughs> that's all that's left. I've made smalls. I've, I've made smalls from that. So my pile are still sitting with me. Um, imperative for me to do big paintings because that's what I that's what I needed to get out for the exhibition. The next thing I'll do is fix the camera up and see if I can take another step forward on these challenge pieces. I had an idea. I've talked before with Sketchbook about putting text down at the beginning. Uh, the answer, uh, yes, when you're starting at the beginning. And I thought, how about trying out some text on these busy small pieces? Where the paint skipped a little bit there and there, I like that, I'll just leave that. So bolder shapes, let that dry. wheeling because of the strength of some shape the contrast of the busyness is making a difference to me this morning I'll I'll take some photographs and um, drop them in I'm really pleased so what if I I've got six six are feeling better are feeling a bit stronger and it's interesting but I'm happier I prefer the black bold marks to the white ones I really quite like something in these. I did put on, I did a little bit of just putting in a white strip. When, when these are dry, I can do a speckle, a, a thin line. I can see it that way as well. Yeah.
new day. Morning, everyone. I have a little parcel I'm quite excited to share. A viewer, a lovely viewer called Teresa, messaged and said, I recently bought a golden paint called Jenkins Green. I thought of you when I saw the colour and that you would love it. Teresa, I've got it. <laughs> I haven't opened it. It came last night. Jenkins Green. I do like on the golden paints that they indicate across the top the degree of opacity or transparency that you're going to get. Oh, it's so nice to open some new paint. I'll just do it on a piece of card that went wrong. And I'm just going to put a little bit down. I might have just the job for this Jenkins green. That's very lovely. I have the only green, I would say the only green that I can't really get on with is Salo green. I've got a System 3 acrylic hookers green, a cheapy hookers green, uh, a lovely Liquite Liquitex muted green, pale olive green. I have a lot of hookers green, leaf green, chromium oxide green. I wonder how that compares the Liquitex. Yeah, very, very, very similar. So Liquitex oxide green, it's very similar to that. Brilliant yellow green, permanent green, light, golden green. That's nice, golden green's nice. And it's nice because it's got lots of yellow. <laughs> so that's lovely. What have I got here? Another sap, sap green. I do repeat. This is amazing. I never really properly go through my paints. I just, when a tube empties, I reorder. Um, it's like opening your herb cupboard. <laughs> I've got far too many of one thing. I, I've got a nice little job that that will help me out. A painting I've got down in the dining room that that can help with. Thank you, Teresa. I will show you the painting that I'm working on. I will employ this lovely Jenkins green. I'll take that back down with me. Hi everyone. In the dining room, I've used my, a little bit of the Jenkins green, the golden. I think the difference between the golden Jenkins is the texture. The Liquitex that I usually buy are soft body acrylics and it's a little bit more fluid. So similar in colour, but a little bit, there's a little bit of a difference on the application. And I like that the Jenkins just gives you a, a slightly deeper edge. Um, that's my feeling on those. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm busy, I'm not finished here. I'm working on this little one. You might remember if you've been following along, I made an attempt, not a completely successful attempt, at using a gel print on a canvas board and that was the beginning that was the bones of that little painting and i've changed it i'm still not quite happy with it um but so i'll keep just making tweaks on here i love i love the cabin but i also love this little station i've got at the end of the dining room table i've got down a couple of my 300 gsm sheets just as protection but it's so nice. This morning I wanted to come down. I've got a couple of boards. I wanted to put a ground down. And I know that, you know, after a shower and all those things, it's dry. It's dry enough for me to then work on. So I can get a little bit of preparation done here without getting the key and going up to the cabin. And I can just do, make small, small things happen when I have got that not enough time to get up into the cabin. Next week, I'm going to share with you, I've been working, 
I've been working on my um, angel and I've decided that I can't, I don't want to sell angel. I've got a little series of cards that have come from, from, from this angel painting. So I'll share those with you next week. We have another canvas, stretched canvas, um, ready to go. And so I'll be prepping, prepping up this canvas and making a start on a brand new painting. So plenty going on still. Have a lovely week. Thank you for watching and subscribing and fantastic comments. It's, the comments are so generous. So I'm, um, I, I'm very, very grateful. They encourage me enormously. So thank you for that. And I will see you next week. Until then, bye for now. Until next week.